Office Space is a 1999 comedy written and directed by Mike Judge, who also wrote and directed Idiocracy. Both films disappointed at the box office, but turned out to be surprising cult classics, and I think very important cultural and societal commentaries. A number of years ago, Devin Stack of Blackpilled produced a brilliant review of Office Space, which I also recommend you check out. The film stars Ron Livingston as Peter Gibbons, Jennifer Aniston as Joanna, Stephen Root as Milton, Gary Cole as Bill Lumberg, Richard Reilly as Tom Simkowski, David Herman as Michael Bolton, and AJ Nadu as Samir. I think anyone who's worked in a soul-crushing, cubicle-based corporate office environment can relate to this film and appreciate just how accurately it portrays the modern, overly bureaucratic, white-collar workplace. Not just the mind-numbing drudgery of the work, the annoying co-workers, the pointless and unnecessary procedures, the awful bosses who completely underappreciate you, but all of the other little everyday headaches, like the immensely stressful commute to work, the irritating behavior of some of your fellow employees, and the claustrophobic and demoralizing nature of the mundane, sterile, fluorescent-lit office space. When I used to work in these kinds of open-plan cubicle offices, I always felt like a cog in the machine, a worker drone in a pod. Everything about the environment is designed to maximize company profits and reduce costs at the expense of the quality of the employee's daily routine. You're given performance reviews and evaluations which are always weighted against you, standards that are impossible to reach. Your failure to achieve your quarterly targets, it's always your fault. It's never the unrealistic targets themselves. I always found that the company and the system by which it worked held a kind of infallible position and could never be called into question. That these kinds of jobs were designed, almost, to push you, the employee, almost right up to the point where you couldn't take any more, just far enough away from that point where you would storm out of the place. These companies were always obsessed with an employee's productivity, but the environment itself never really could maximize an individual's productive output because the corporate workplace was designed to cut costs at every turn. It could only micromanage and squeeze the employee so much. So we're going to talk more about the 1999 film Office Space right after this. But first, a word from today's sponsor for this video, the awesome free-to-play role-playing game Raid Shadow Legends. Use my link in the description box below or scan my QR code on screen to download the game for free today. The best part about Raid is its exciting live arena PvP battles. And to tell you more about them, here's Professor Death Knight. Professor Death Knight here with a lesson about Live Arena, the new PvP mode where you can fight against other players in real time. <gasps> Sounds terrifying? Well, so's going to the dentist. You should still do it. Live Arena has a draft feature where you can pick and ban champions to fight for you. <laughs> Teamwork! When you win matches, you'll get Live Arena crests towards unlocking special area bonuses, or so I hear. I'm too afraid to try any of this out. Alright class, any questions? Hello, NPC Dave here. Can you tell me what's your favorite combat strategy for Live Arena? Well, everyone thinks I'll go in fighting, but nobody expects my charm. My best strength is the gift of gab. So when they try to attack, I'll just be like, nice weather we're having, eh? Nobody will see it coming. Absolute cringe boomer humor detected. Anyone else with a question? Hi, Professor Death Knight, Dave Cullen here. My question is, considering I'm going very badly bald in real life, do you think I should update my channel art so that my cartoon avatar also has less hair? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. Well, on that note, for new players looking to experience Raid Shadow Legends, you can now get your hands on Stag Knight, a phenomenally powerful epic champion and one that was designed by JonTron. Use the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th and existing players can get this champion through an in-game event. There's some other awesome free stuff available as well, like Sun Wukong, which is Raid's interpretation of the Monkey King from Chinese mythology. And he's recently had his dramatic introduction to the game and he's easy to get. Just log in during seven different days between now and October 23rd and you can 
add him to your champions. He's totally free. And make sure you use my link in the description box or scan my QR code on screen to get plenty of other bonuses, such as Epic Champion Talia from the Sacred Order faction, along with bonuses such as Energy Refills, Skill Tome, and an XP Booster, all very handy to have. So download Raid for free today. Don't forget to use my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description box below or scan my QR code on screen to get these insane bonuses for new players with an Epic Champion. Okay, so welcome back. So before I get into the film, let's talk more about the, the kind of corporate environment that the film portrays. So you spend most of your week, five days, sitting in front of your computer in your small, cramped little area, waiting for 5 o'clock or 5.30 to roll around. So you're looking at the clock the whole time, and you're living for the weekends, basically, wishing most of your life away, hating almost every minute of what you're doing in work, and to make matters worse, you're getting massively underpaid and a huge chunk of your abysmal salary is probably heavily taxed. And yet, there's this almost schizophrenic part of you that fears losing this job. As much as you wish you could just quit and walk out at any time and leave it all behind you, the sort of wage slavery aspect of this corporate system means that you need the job to pay your bills and your rent, your mortgage, whatever. So I remember hating working in these kinds of jobs, but paradoxically being afraid of rumblings and rumors of downsizing and layoffs, which were frequent, um, being made redundant. I did actually eventually take redundancy from one particular corporate job I was in, and I went back to college, and then I ended up back in an even worse corporate job after I graduated, and that was the last one that I ever worked in. Thankfully, I didn't last long in that place. I quit after a little over a year. Um, Office Space is a fantastic satirical comedy, and I think what resonates about it with so many people is that it's a rare occasion when Hollywood manages to really achieve an honest and authentic portrayal of an aspect of everyday life that so many people endure, the modern corporate workplace. So today, we're going to dive into this film, Office Space, and if you haven't seen it, please stop this video now, go and watch it, and then come back to me. Okay, so the main character of the story is Peter Gibbons. He's an ordinary, everyday nice guy and programmer. He works for a middle-of-the-road software company called Inatech, and he has two friends in the office, Michael and Samir, who are equally as unhappy in their jobs. Uh, even before Peter's day begins, and he has a dreadful commute, but he dreads the office doorknob that always gives him a little static shock in the morning. Uh, he's irritated by the repetitive tone of the office receptionist. His obnoxious and condescending boss, Bill Lumberg, is always hovering around, pestering him for a, a cover sheet on a, a TPS report or something. Some banal, bureaucratic, pointless procedure that adds zero value, no doubt, to the quality of the work. Uh, the character of Milton is not a kind of archetypal office character I've worked with. He's often mumbling to himself incoherently, He's a bit of a cartoonish kind of character, perhaps. Very fearful and neurotic. He allows himself to be walked on a lot, but he expresses his frustration under his breath. Uh, there's one aspect of Milton that does kind of remind me of someone I used to work with in this kind of job. Uh, there was an older guy I knew who was always objecting to the slightest change demanded of him in the office by his bosses. Uh, even if it was just a change of where he sat. Uh, companies do this all the time uh, for no apparent reason, though they claim it boosts productivity or something. Uh, they change where you sit, okay? So every so often they, they move you around. Um, and occasionally, so you're, you're occasionally told to swap seats with other employees. And I think it's actually another demoralization tactic or something because once you get comfortable in a particular seating arrangement and maybe you like some of the people you're sitting next to, then they move you around. Right? And I think it's done to basically show you that the company sees you as just another physical asset, uh, like an appliance, much like the photocopier, right? To be moved around when some busybody middle manager sees fit because they've read somewhere that it boosts productivity and they want to justify their job to their boss. The kind of middle manager who's desperate to justify themselves to their superiors. But this guy I used to work with, he would always object to such seat rotations. 
much like Milton does in this film. And in fact, the guy I used to work with would always kick up a fuss, saying that he would get in touch with the union and complain about the slightest thing. It never made a difference. But in addition to the various everyday irritations, uh, there's the ultimate work irritation, which is the office photocopier, which always breaks down and has paper jams. I think we've all been there. Peter is a guy who is deeply unhappy with his life, but isn't doing anything to take constructive action to change anything. And when you're stuck in those dead-end kind of corporate office jobs, because you have so little free time, you come home in the evening, it's very late, you watch TV, you're tired, you go to bed, it becomes very difficult to take constructive steps to change your life. So you kind of feel like a passenger in your own life, in a way. So Peter is not being proactive, and he's not standing up for himself, and that includes a lot of his relationships, professional and personal, due to his girlfriend troubles. So some productivity managers are coming in to assess the staff and to streamline everything, which basically means you know, fire some people. And there's a scene where Lumberg gives a speech to the office employees. There's a banner that reads, Is this good for the company? I don't know how many times I encountered this kind of situation. These kinds of pointless corporate meetings where you're basically being programmed again by office management, right? Uh, it was during these kinds of meetings that you could you could really sense the divide between management and the staff. Sometimes these kinds of meetings would come bundled with you know, team building exercises. And of course, then there was the training and the, the role plays and the, the core values and all these things that you had to memorize and regurgitate. Again, all just nonsense programming and very demoralizing. So Peter is increasingly fed up and he's been told that he has to work the weekend and he goes to a hypnotherapist at the behest of his girlfriend and the therapist puts him in a trance to help him relax and get over his worries and cares and concerns about his job but also removes his inhibitions. But the therapist was supposed to snap his fingers and take him out of this state but he takes a heart attack and dies right there. So Peter is left in this completely apathetic state. So he lays on in bed, ignores Lumberg's calls, his girlfriend even calls and breaks up with him on the phone and he just doesn't care, and goes back to bed without a care in the world. And he doesn't show up for work on the weekend like Lumberg asked him to. He just takes back his power by no longer fearing the worst possible outcome. And he asks out the girl that he likes in the restaurant, played by Jennifer Aniston. And when he does show up to work, he doesn't bother with a suit and tie. He becomes much more direct with people. He tells Joanna he doesn't like his job, so he's not going to go anymore. And she asks him how he's going to pay his bills, and he says that he doesn't like paying bills, so he's just not going to do that either. So when Peter does show up to work, he dresses casually, he meets with the consultants and he's completely honest with them. He tells them he shows up late every day. He takes the stairs to avoid Lumberg by, by using a side door. Uh, he, he spaces out for an hour at his desk. And I remember what that was like, actually. He says in a given week, he does about 15 minutes of real work. He explains to them that he's not lazy, he just doesn't care. He says he doesn't see any reason why he should work harder than he needs to to help Inatech ship more units because he doesn't see a dime of that. So he's not motivated. And he says he has too many bosses to report to, so he's only motivated enough to not get fired. And they're blown away by his honesty and the fact that he has a completely different energy to the rest of the staff that they interview because everybody else is afraid of losing their job and he, he doesn't care. He's direct, he's confident, sure of himself, he's charismatic. And ultimately, he has a take-it-or-leave-it kind of attitude. And because he lacks fear, he's giving off this very alpha male quality, which most people are drawn to. So there's, there's a great musical montage scene where the song by Ghetto Boys, Damn It Feels Good To Be A Gangsta, is playing, and Peter is just doing whatever he likes in the office. Now, some of the stuff he's doing is, is silly, obviously. I mean, damaging the doorknob, breaking open the office cubicle he's sitting at, parking in Lumberg's parking space. 
playing video games when he should be working. I mean, he'd be disciplined for these kinds of things in reality. I mean, he'd probably get fired pretty quickly. But it's a comedy, obviously. But the film makes the point very well. Uh, by not being tethered to an outcome, especially a negative outcome, and not living in fear of negative consequences, you live in a way that is observably more authentic and true to yourself. And other people do take notice of this. So he becomes very powerful and his boss can't handle him anymore. So Lumberg's power that was sort of crippling Peter for so long has now been taken away. In fact, the two corporate consultants like Peter so much that they end up overruling Lumberg and they decide that Peter is actually deserving of a promotion. So watching this with the benefit of hindsight, looking back at my corporate career, I wonder what I was ever worried about. I mean, I could have been fired, but it wasn't like the sky was going to fall in. There was worse things in the world than me being fired or walking out of a job that I hated. Unfortunately, Peter's friends are going to get fired in the downsizing, and slowly, Peter starts to snap out of his hypnotic state, though he retains much of his confidence. He doesn't go back to being the man he started out as, but he starts to see the seriousness of the situation. So his friend Michael comes up with this plan. He develops a computer virus that would siphon off small amounts of money from the company, not enough that anyone would notice this, but over time it would add up to a lot. And so they intend to, to take this money for themselves. But it goes horribly wrong and ends up taking a lot more money than expected in a very short amount of time which means it will be discovered very soon. So all three men could be heading to jail. Meantime, Joanna has also quit her job in the restaurant chain that she works for. She had a similar micromanaging boss to Lumberg. She wasn't interested in the ridiculous policy of decorating your outfit in flair, which is all of these little silly pins and buttons. Uh, so she gives her boss the finger and storms out. Meantime, the character of Milton has had just about enough of being treated so poorly by his bosses at Inatech. He actually wasn't supposed to be still working at the company. Um, there was a payroll issue for years, this glitch that just kept paying him. Uh, but anyway, he's now seated alone in the basement and he's about ready to snap at this point. Uh, Peter, Michael and Samir think it's game over for them. Management has discovered the money is missing. So Peter prepares to face the music, but when everyone arrives at work the next day, the building has been set on fire. So Milton burned Inatech to the ground. So the evidence of Peter and Michael and Samir's fraud has also gone up in smoke. That's very fortunate for them. Peter ends up getting a construction job and he feels happier to be out of the stuffy corporate office environment. But actually, there was a deleted scene where we find out that his new construction boss is also quite a lot like Bill Lumberg. Milton makes off with some of the money that Peter had tried to return and takes a vacation on a beach somewhere. The film ends. Ultimately, Office Space brilliantly and very accurately portrays just how dehumanizing, soul-destroying, demeaning and torturous the corporate office job can be. When I used to work in such companies, I would, every few years, suffer mental health issues. I'd get depressed, I'd end up going to therapists, and some of these therapists would always tell me the same thing, which is the consistent pattern in my complaints was the work I was doing. So as soon as I left the corporate world, with all of its unpleasantness, my mental health improved. I never looked back. The whole environment for me was absolutely antithetical to my well-being. And the thing is that the society we live in tells us that this is normal life, right? And that if you're the one struggling with this, you're the one that's at fault. You're to blame. The conditions of the labor market are not to blame. They're perfect. The corporate office world is beyond reproach and above scrutiny. You know, if you have a problem with that, then, then you know where the door is. So, you know, dreading Monday morning, hating waking up in the morning to go to work, to commute, finding no meaning in the work you're doing, greatly disliking your bosses or co-workers, and lamenting how little you're appreciated, especially in terms of financial remuneration. Shockingly, this is not a path to a fulfilling life. 
Is it any wonder so many people have decided to drop out of such an environment? Office Space is a great film. Very relevant, well worth watching, and above all, it's quite funny as a comedy as well. So that about does it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And, of course, a final reminder to download Raid Shadow Legends via my link in the description box or via the on-screen QR code. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.